people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to yet another very exciting FNAF news video. In today's video, of course, we got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about, some major updates on the upcoming FNAF movie, and that involves a brand new teaser showing brand new footage for the film, brand new behind the scenes, brand new looks at the animatronic characters. We finally got a look at Funko's upcoming holiday plushies, as well as brand new footage based on the fanverse. So let's not waste any more time if you're excited for all this FNAF movie news, because I still got another FNAF news video coming out very soon. So Subscribe to the channel, you don't want to miss out on that, and also I apologize if my voice sounds weird. I lost it the other day, and I think it's still trying to come back. But anyway, let's kick this video off by taking a look at a brand new gameplay preview being shown off for t -Jock, the Ignited Collection. Once again, this is another look at the first level in the brand new story mode for t -Jock, the office level. Specifically, in this preview, we get a lot of shots of Ignited Freddy, who actually has a brand new model. You may remember this model was originally going to be his new model for t -Jock, the Ignited collection. And while we don't get a full look at the brand new model for Ignited Freddy, Coco Beans, one of the animators on the Ignited collection, did show off this behind the scenes. Once again, another amazing showcase for t -Jock. The gameplay looks awesome, the model looks awesome, I do hope we get a proper look soon, as well as the animation for Ignited Freddy. And if you did forget, we are going to be getting a demo of The Office later this year. Moving on now to Pop Goes Evergreen, we got Kane Carter taking to Twitter to say every single Pop Goes the Weasel render has now been made for Evergreen. Over 60 unique positions and scenarios and even multiple animations. It's a lot for a single enemy in a FNAF style game. Big thanks to Garrett too for getting us to this milestone. An absolutely amazing milestone. Shout out to Garrett once again. Can't wait to see more Evergreen in the future. Sticking with Pop Goes, but also now moving on to merchandise, we've got Kane Carter showing an updated edition of the Long Pop Goes YouTube's plushie. He says, after taking in feedback from multiple platforms, we have finalized a new design for the upcoming Long Pop Goes plushie by YouTube's. The original version had some very very basic eyes which also didn't match with the long candies plushie but here with this new version of the plush I think it looks adorable a massive improvement in my opinion and Kane also confirmed that U2's upcoming sitting pop goes plushie will also be receiving these new eyes sticking with U2's they had another AMA over on reddit where they answered a whole bunch of FNAF questions are we getting FNAF movie products they answered kind of we have stuff planned around the movie but it won't be specific to the movie what we can say is the style we're doing hasn't been done before for for FNAF figures, so we're excited. What month is the FNAF Help Wanted wave, which if you've forgotten, will include characters like Shadow Mangle, Dreadbear, Glitchtrap, and Grim Foxy. U2's replying whenever the game drops, December-ish, which is an interesting response there. We're gonna tackle that a bit more in a future FNAF news video, so again, subscribe so you don't miss out on that. What characters will be in the FNAF Ruin wave? The Ruin wave will include Ruined Roxy, Ruined Chica, Ruined Monty, Ruined Eclipse, and the Mexus Entity. And the estimated time of release for that wave will be by the end of the year. Anything for the Mimic? They say maybe. And actually, once this got out over on Twitter, they did confirm they will be making a figure for the Mimic. Whatever happened to those illuminated and blacklight FNAF 1 figures? Apparently, they're still in the works. Release date for the Springtrap plushie is currently unknown, but it should be out before the end of the year. And lastly, people asked about Scrap Trap and Spring Bonnie, both of which U2's replied with, maybe. Let's see what we can do. Going back to the Ruin wave, they did release this preview of the figure of the Mexus entity. Now, of course, this is only his backside, though already he looks absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love the particles going around him. They got his wiring spot on, his digital effects spot on, like I said. And lastly, for you twos, they showed off this Freddy Fazbear holder figure. So you can make him hold your phone or your gaming controller. I guess if you'd want to do that. Moving on now to Funko, we finally got our first look at the entire wave of holiday plushies. And this is what they look like. Of course, going down the list, we've got Santa Freddy, Elf Bonnie, Snow Chica, Gingerbread Foxy, as well as two retail exclusives of Nutcracker Foxy, as well as a 16-inch version of the Santa Freddy plush. Now, personally, I think this wave is okay, I guess. There are some plushies I think really look good, like that Gingerbread Foxy, and honestly, Elf Bonnie he's kind of cute. But man, some of those characters like Nutcracker Foxy, I just cannot get around to loving. I'm curious to know what are your thoughts on these plushies as well as the entire rest of the holiday wave, the pops, the figures. And speaking of Funko Pops, we got brand new Biddy Pops being released soon. The first pack will contain Ballora, Funtime Foxy, and Circus Baby from Sister Location. Pack number two, Foxy, Cupcake Chica. Pack number three, Freddy, Bonnie, Balloon Boy. And lastly, pack number four, we got Nightmare Bonnie, Nightmare Chica, as well as Nightmare Freddy. Now with each box, there 
is a mystery fourth character that you can get, and on the back, it's revealed that that could be Nightmare Cupcake, Springtrap, Nightmare Foxy, or Funtime Freddy. So what are your thoughts on these Biddy Pops? Are you gonna be picking them up? As far as I'm aware, they release next month. And lastly, for Funko, but also segueing into the FNAF movie news, we are gonna be getting Funko FNAF movie merchandise. Now, unfortunately, we don't know exactly what's going to be included in this wave of products. My personal hope is that Funko finally gets around to making some human FNAF characters like Mike, Vanessa, and Abby, and of course, Afton from the movie. Updated FNAF 1 figures could be neat as well. They could be flocked with better articulation and updated molds. Of course, I'm just spitballing here. What do you want to see in this Funko FNAF movie wave? And now let's move on to FNAF movie news proper. First up, we got this brand new behind the scenes photo being supplied by Garen Sparks. This photo is definitely interesting because a lot of fans have pointed out that the suits look a lot more clean, a lot more polished than they usually do in the teasers and trailers. That's leading a lot of people to speculate this could be an early version of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza before the suits got abandoned inside the restaurant before they started to get all worn down. It's also interesting the fact that these characters are sitting. That most likely means that the actors are inside these costumes right now. Either that or maybe in an early version of Freddy's Pizza, the animatronics were sitting instead of standing. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Again, I'm personally led to believe that this is most likely a flashback towards an earlier point in time at Freddy's. Lastly on FNAF News, we talked about how Halloween Horror Nights is going to be featuring the FNAF animatronics from the movie. And well, since then, the event has officially kicked off and this is what the characters look like on display at the event. This is really surreal to see. Of course, we got main man Freddy Fazbear, Foxy, Chica, as well as Bonnie. Now, something interesting, the notes by their feet do mention these are the original costumes. Now, very likely, this could just be the notes saying these are the official, you know, animatronic costumes used in the film. But I have seen a lot of people point towards why would you call them original if you're going to have other variants of them in the future. So if that's the case, that could be hinting towards the Withers or the Toys or really any other of the 50 million versions of Freddy's gang. But getting an up close shot of these characters, you can see just how much detail was put into them. It's absolutely insane. Here's an up close shot of Cupcake as well. He's also on display alongside Chica. He looks a bit angry and upset at whoever's taking this photo. Now, something I love about Fox is that the tufts of fur on the side of his head are actually like super fuzzy. As we can see in this up close shot, we can also see a whole bunch of the mechanisms inside the animatronic costume because Foxy's all ripped up. And for some reason, Freddy was propped up so his arms and shoulders are like super broad, so it looks like he's super buff, I guess. But either way, all these characters look absolutely fantastic. This is gonna be going on for select nights at Universal Studios Hollywood. And that lasts until now, all the way to Halloween day, October 31st. So you still got a while if you do wanna go check out these animatronics. And if you do go to Halloween Horror Nights, it's very likely you're gonna see this brand new teaser for the film with brand new footage. Some interesting new shots to take into account. First up, we've got Mike entering the restaurant alone, unlocking the gate, opening the door, going through the hallways. He's all alone. He doesn't have Abby or Vanessa or anyone by his side. An extended shot of him talking to Vanessa as well as her turning on some lights, which seem to activate the showtime. We get another extended shot of Mike looking at the showtime. Then we have Max again in the back room with Freddy, Bonnie in the supply closet with Hank, where we get an absolutely terrifying shot of Bonnie in the darkness. They introduce Chica, of course, Mr. Cupcake attacks Carl. We get those shots again of Foxy hunting down Abby in the ball pit. And then we get Mike reacting to William Afton with a bit more dialogue this time. I'd love to know what are your thoughts on this brand new footage for the FNAF movie. I still can't get over how terrifying Bonnie is in the supply closet with Hank. And also, I believe we're now 50 days until the release of the film as of the recording of this video and when it's posted. So not too, too much longer. And in fact, if you're living in the UK, you might have to wait even less. Because apparently, according to Universal Pictures UK themselves, the FNAF movie will be released on October 25th in the United Kingdom instead of the typical October 27th. That's certainly going to be interesting to see how that goes down, I'd highly recommend if you're out of the UK, maybe stay off social media for those few days. But I'd love to know, UK fans, are you excited that you might be getting the FNAF movie two days earlier than the rest of us schmucks? All right, well now let's move on to our final FNAF movie news topic for today, and that is the official runtime for the film. Because we've got Cinemark, AMC Theaters, and Adam Ticket listing the film with an official runtime of one hour and 50 minutes. Now, quite frankly, because all these platforms have gotten this release date at basically the same time, and AMC especially has very reliable 
track records with listing proper legit runtimes for movies. I would not be surprised at all if this is at least close, if not the full official runtime for the film. Now, obviously, this is a bit lower, just a bit, <laughs> than the three hour runtime we previously reported on. Now, either that was just a massive troll on Blumhouse's part, or maybe that's like the full entire footage that they shot for the full film. And of course, they had to edit it down because you can't just release a three hour long FNAF movie. Let's be honest here. I do hope at the very least, if we do have this less than two hour runtime, maybe when it comes out on physical or maybe when it releases on Peacock, we can get a bit more footage, you know, a bit of an extended cut, a coffin cut, dare I say. Because again, if that three hour runtime was correct, that means we've lost over an hour of footage that is just not going to be used. So here's hoping if again, all these runtimes are legit, we can get that extra bonus footage at some point in the future. Now, an hour and 50 minutes is still quite long, especially for a horror movie. So quite frankly, I'm pretty content with this runtime. But that is going to do it for this FNAF news video. Like I said, a lot more videos coming out soon. Another FNAF news video. I still got to analyze this new FNAF trailer we got. So stay on the lookout for that and so, so much more. Thank you all so much for watching this video and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.